What's up everyone, welcome back. Austin here from AppSheet Training where we teach you how to level up your skills to upgrade your career. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified when new content is posted. By the end of this video, you will learn the seven essential steps of the AppSheet development process. Throughout this series, we will meet our expert AppSheet developers, giving you insider best practices on AppSheet development. In this video, we'll take a look at the overall AppSheet development process. Let's get started. Step one is to define your entities. This is where you'll define each entity and the relationships between them in your app build. I like to use a use case doc to organize all of my ideas and then begin building my tables and my data source next. For my use case, I want to build a content planner app with Google Calendar integration. Let me show you a quick preview of how I map this out in my use case doc. So here we have our summary and I just listed out a brief description of what my main goals are and why the app is being developed. And then the user stories is where I list out my high level steps and activities um, for the app build. And then I move down to the functional requirements and list out what um, functional requirements I want in my app build. And then lastly, I have my data relationship diagram here. Awesome, now we have that mapped out and we're ready to go. Step two, let's build our data tables. Now that we have our use case doc filled out, we can start building our data tables. For this use case, I have two data sources, Google Calendar and Google Sheets. Let's take a look at how I set up my data tables in Google Sheets. Here, I've created three data tables. I have a platform table, a crew table, and a content table. The platform table has a platform ID. I highlighted it right here. The next table is my crew table. It has an email um, column, and this is gonna be my ID column for the crew table. Um, so the platform table has a platform ID, but this table um, email is unique, so I can use this as my key column for a crew table or um, for your use case, it could be like an employee's table. Next, our content table. This is our child table of the two parent tables. So it is a child table because the platform ID is referenced um, here in the content table from the platform table. So I have that highlighted here as platform ID and then I'm also referencing the crew table with the assign to column, which I have highlighted here. All right, so I've got my data tables mapped out and it's ready to go and connect with AppSheet. Now that we have our data tables built out, let's look at setting up our Google Calendar. So you're gonna to wanna to navigate to Google Calendar and then I wanted to call my calendar the Content Planner Calendar. So how I made this new calendar is I went to Other Calendars, I clicked the Add button and then clicked Create New Calendar. I wrote my calendar's name, for my use case, it's content planner. And then I just clicked create calendar. And that's all you have to do to set up your Google Calendar as a data source to connect with AppSheet in our next step. Step three, let's create the app and connect the data. Once we have all of our data tables set up, the next step is to connect our data sources to AppSheet. For this use case, we have two data sources, Google Sheets and Google Calendar. Let's take a look at how to set this up. Now that we're in AppSheet, Let's make sure AppSheet has connected all of our data tables that we created in our Google Sheets. So first, I'm gonna connect the crew table. So there we go. AppSheet will load a little bit and our crew table will be connected to AppSheet. All right, next we're gonna um, also do the same thing. We're gonna add the table, the content table next um, so that that also is connected inside of AppSheet. I'll load for a second again. All right, there we go. So now we have our content, platform, and crew tables. Those are all of the tables that we had inside of Google Sheets. But we're still missing something, our Google Calendar. Let's go ahead and add that new table. We're gonna to navigate to the Google Calendar one. And there it is, our content planner. Perfect. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and click add this table. And just like that, we've got our content Planner app um, connected to all of our data sources and it's ready to go. 
If you're still wondering how to map out these data relationships on your own, we recommend signing up for our AppSheet Proficiency Bootcamp. You can find more information about this course in the description below. Let's keep going. Step four, define the user experience. Now that we have our data connected to AppSheet, we can begin building out the optimal user experience for our app. We will polish up form views and create a guided user experience for our users. Let's look at best practices for setting this up for our use case. We're gonna to navigate to the UX tab and go to views and add a new view. We're gonna start with the primary view, it's our content calendar, and then our menu view is the crew um, view. So you can find that by going to the menu tab and then selecting crew right there. Perfect. All right, let's look at the contents of the content calendar. The view name is content calendar. Um, the data is the content table. I selected a calendar view to display my data and it's gonna be in the center right here. Here's the different view options that I selected. And then I selected a calendar icon to show me what kind of view it is. Perfect, that's all we need to do to set up a calendar view type inside of AppSheet. Step five, refine the app's behavior. Our next step is to refine our app's behavior and ensure that the proper actions and automations are set up for our use case. We're gonna to navigate to the behavior tab, actions, add a new action. Our first action will be add to Google Calendar. This action is taking records from the content table and adding them to the content planner our Google Calendar. You can see that listed here. Perfect. Our appearance is going to be the icon plus, and then our behavior is going to be this expression here. To learn more about expressions, we recommend signing up for our expression mastery course. Perfect. Now let's add this to our content form. Okay, so I'm gonna to navigate to UX, and then I'm gonna open up my content planner form I'm sorry, my content form. And then here we can see the content form view. So I clicked on that, it opens up the content form, UX view. All right, and so I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and find behavior. And then our event actions, when the form is saved, it's gonna add it to the Google Calendar. And that's all we have to do. Our Google Calendar action is set up and ready to go. Next, let's look at automations inside of AppSheet. To set up an automation, we're gonna to navigate to Automation, Bots, and add a new bot. I have one automation running for this app, Initial Email. So, once I created the new bot, I titled it Initial Email. When this event occurs, it's going to send an email on a data change, and it's gonna be ads and updates, the content and the condition will be status equals not started. So what is it gonna do? It's gonna send an email. So it's gonna run a task right here and then the task is to run the initial email. And so the table name will be the content table and um, the channel will be system default and it's gonna be to anybody who is assigned to create content for that event. And I'm just gonna use the default content for this. And that's how to set up a simple automation inside of AppSheet. Step six is to review app security. Our last step is to finalize security filters and make sure the tables add, edit, and delete features are configured correctly. So the way we do this is we're gonna to navigate to security and then we're gonna to go to security filters. I wanna add a security filter to the content table. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the content table I have input this expression here. And this, what this expression allows me to do is to see only data that's associated to me or whoever the user is that is using the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this user to Justin and hit apply. And now our app will filter the data according to what user is using the app. Perfect, so now Justin can see only his um, content events and I can see only my content events. And that's how you set up a simple security filter inside of AppSheet. Our final step is to deploy our app. This is the best part of the app development process. We have checked all of our behaviors, designs, and security filters, and we're ready to move the app to deployed state. To do this, simply click the deploy button in AppSheet. 
And that's it. Seven simple steps to help you develop your apps from idea to deployment. Now don't forget to sign up for a free tech talk with me by clicking the link in the description below. And we can build out your app's design and get you started on the right learning path for leveling up your app sheet skills and upgrading your career.